In this video I'll show you how I built this wooden router insert plate that together with the fixed base that came with my router is my new router lift and router table. The insert plate is height adjustable from above the table and is held in place with four knobs. That means I can get it out without any tools and use it as a fixed base router with a much bigger base. It also features a second insert plate, height adjustability from above the table, and a system that keeps the spindle lock locked, which allows for a one handed router bit change. Some of these features, like the height adjustability right here, come from the router base I used. But this router insert plate concept could be adapted to any router base or any commercial or homemade router lift. And it's also quite simple to build. This video was intended to start a little different, so don't get confused. The build of this will begin in about a minute. It's time to upgrade the router in my router table. This is one of my oldest pieces of equipment, about five years old or older, before I started making videos. And it was never that great because it has a route in it that cost 20 euros used off of eBay and it's not a great router. And for quite some time now I have this router that I use with the pent router and since I don't use that all the time I can also use this for the router and the router table because this is a quite decent router. Router, router, router. It came with a plunge and a fixed base and the fixed base has this cool feature that it came with a tool which allows you to raise and lower the router through a table. So basically this will be my new router lift. One design issue here, you're supposed to raise and lower it by sticking this through the top and turn the spindle but then the screw of the dust collection is in the way. Not really clever. Hmm, quite a mess. I have to get out a rotor lift now, but why did I screw this down with four screws on both sides? Dust from many years ago. This rotor lift actually is way too big for this little rotor. But time to take it apart because I want to reuse the top. That piece of birch plywood with laminate on both sides never had nice edges and also wasn't square, so I took care of that first. Now I want to cut a new hole for the insert plate. Therefore I've clamped on guides on all sides and the distance between the line where I want to cut and the guide is the same as from the router bit edge to the router base. I removed some material with the jigsaw first and then routed all around the guides. Maybe I should have used a different router bit, because this actually is a metal cutting bit, but it left a really nice finish and some burn marks. Well, whatever. If you do something like this, a quick tip, always reference of the same edge of the router base, because it's not 100% sure that the distance from here to the edge is the same as from here to the edge, because these bases never are absolutely round and absolutely centered so I always referenced off of there and everything went fine. I sized the hole so that the router with the handles attached fits through. Now I cut a piece of phenolic resin coated birch plywood and this is my new insert plate. It's an exact fit and instead of chiseling square I just rounded over the corners of the insert plate. Next I marked about 14 millimeters in from each corner and drilled a recess for the washer. The Forstner bit leaves a center mark that I could use for centered through holes which I also chamfered. These two pieces of hardwood will be here. Every screw hole is also pre-drilled but I won't show this every time. Now I can drop in the insert plate again and transfer these whole locations onto the hardwood. I drilled the hole the right size for an M6 tap and I'm now going to tap the wood. 
If you don't believe in threads and wood, just use a threaded insert instead. Next I glued the washers with some super glue in place. Now I have a thick insert plate that should not bend under load with four metal on metal contact points which I can fine adjust from above the table. If you can and have used hex head bolts that's better than what I used. I made some cutouts in the hardwood to clear the handles. To find out the position on the insert plate I just hold it here roughly by eye and then measure it. Six and a half centimeters from this edge. I can put a forcement bit where I want the center to be and that will help me to align this base plate. Everything fits but the router can still do this and that should not happen during routing, so I need a way to secure the insert plate to the table. This time I transferred whole locations from the hardwood to the insert plate, which I then again tapped. I don't quite have the right screws yet, and later replace this with nice knobs. But the concept works. When I take the router out to use the fixed base, I would like these knobs to stay in place and not fall down. The simplest solution was to create a burr that would jam the bolt in the hole. I drilled the upper section of the holes a little bigger so that the burr has no effect there. This little burr now prevents it from falling down. I could not drill the hole where the rotor bits are, but I would still like to be able to change the rotor bits from above the table and therefore I need to make another insert plate in the insert plate. I can make it as big as this circle of the baits. To make this hole I just screwed this base to a scrap board, installed a bit and drilled a hole exactly a distance I need for the hole in the insert plate and there I put the drill bit into a hole. This I can now stick into this hole and then route the circle. Here I only routed as much so that the bearing of a flush trim bit has enough contact area. And without dust collection, routing makes a lot of chips. Next I cut a roughly oversized circle which will be the insert plate insert plate. And to get it to exact size I used my router table circle jig, about which I also have a video linked in the video description. Then it was basically a back and forth of adjusting a little bit, routing and testing, until it had the right fit. Now that's a satisfying fit. Now I want to mount a ring here so that I can again use three leveling screws for this insert plate. But I made a mistake. Because I made the hole the same size as the router body and now there's no space left around the hole to mount the ring. My solution is I made another disc exactly the same way as this one but this time it fits snugly. Then I made it into a ring with a hole saw and then evenly spaced three holes for the three adjustment screws. Just three screws were too tippy so now I installed six. I countersunk the holes so that I can make the screw heads flush with this surface. I let them protrude a little bit now and now I insert the actual insert plate and now I can glue this ring in place. With a fit this tight the glue should set and dry in 5 to 10 minutes and I'm actually quite glad that this mistake happened because now seeing this I like this solution much better than my original idea. And then I had a really big problem because the ring was actually a tiny bit bigger than the round section in the router base. So that didn't fit at all anymore. I tried to chisel away some material to fix this and then the glue failed. Solving one problem created the next and I almost wanted to give up and start all over again. But actually anything can be fixed. So I kept going. I managed to get the ring out again and send it off a little bit of the glue. And then I routed a rabbit on the edge of the ring.
That's how I wanted that. You can already get it the nut here. And when it's all the way up, yeah, it's very easy. I then installed a lever that would press the spindle lock and keep it locked with magnets. So installing the router bit, I engage the spindle lock. Tighten it. And as you just could see, it doesn't hold it that well, which is not actually bad because now it disengaged and the magnet holds in place. It won't be able to engage the spindle lock during use. Now the hole for the router bits in the insert plate. On the old one I often wished I had made it smaller, so this time I make it just as big so that the nut of the router can fit through. And after that I spent some time leveling out the insert plate. Insert plate. To ensure the same orientation each time, this leveling screw sticks out further and here I drilled and chiseled a little notch where it fits in. And here I installed three magnets, they sit also in leveling screws. And hold it in place. And that's it. Now I've checked out my relatively straight 12mm rod and with that I can test a few things. This is 33cm above the chuck and this is the amount of runout. Not too bad, maybe also the rod isn't fully straight. Now testing how square the router is to the insert plate. That looks perfect to me. I really can't get used to a spindle lock that keeps itself locked. Finally I install the safety switch. One that won't restart the router if there was a power outage. I have to press the button again. And I also made myself a crank out of an allen key and a few 3D printed parts. And that's just so much better to raise and load a bit than the thing that came with the router. And from now on this will be my new router lift and router table. I've already used it a bit and it's such a pleasure to use this. Very happy that I did this upgrade. One last thing, marking the direction of the rod a bit is so useful. I did this on my old table as well and that often prevents feeding the wrong direction. Also, let's pretend this did not happen. This is a section where a shaper could be the... This was a very badly hacked together piece for dust collection. I dropped the screw. And for a bit change, bring it up to about this height. Okay, never forget to lock the router again. Shit. Finally, I install the safety switch. Oops. 